Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India friends uh, welcome for another understanding about uh, the introductory rule of sociology <coughs> and uh, with regard to that we were trying to study uh, the issues of continuity and changes which are basically associated with the uh, rural india and uh, as we were discussing about uh, unit fourth that is the changing agrarian structure and the rural developmental concerns in the rural society and uh, within that uh, we are dealing with the uh, uh, section 15th, uh, that is chapter 15th, uh, which is on rural poverty and rural development initiatives. I think uh, the discussion uh, on this particular theme will highlight the understanding of rural poverty and its measures. Uh, it will deliberate upon the concept and the strategies uh, with regard to the rural development and also it will enlist the salient programs uh, which are related to the poverty elevation and the rural development in India. I think uh, uh, these are certain things uh, and broadly if you try to see, uh, I think uh, our concern in this uh, uh, unit of discussion will be the importance of rural development, but before that we have to understand how we can understand the issue of poverty because poverty is basically seen as a concept uh, which is essential with regard to any uh, developing and underdeveloped nations. Uh, because eradicating poverty is definitely considered to be an important issue and that is why I think uh, <coughs> poverty concern is going to be an important issue. Uh, beyond that, I think uh, when we try to speak about the issue of rural poverty, then it becomes more intense uh, because they are doubly burdened. Uh, like uh, we try to see that uh, the rural in terms of development uh, is considered to be at the backstage as compared to the development which is there in the urban. So, that way I think uh, if you try to see, uh, we basically try to find out that uh, the sort of uh, what you can say the rural uh, uh, has to be seen and when it comes down to the poverty, then things have become more complex. So, we have to actually address the issue of uh, rural poverty and for that uh, we have various rural development programs. So, we have to understand what are the nature and the scope of the rural development. Uh, what are the objectives of the rural development that is going to be an important issue and also what are the various approaches uh, which we have to speak about. And uh, I think uh, the basic understanding is that uh, it will try to revolve on, uh, around certain programs and the policies which have been generated by <coughs> the state. So, virtually we can say that in order to overcome the issue of uh, rural poverty, I think various rural development programs have been initiated by government of India, by the state government in order to overcome uh, certain uh, what you can say hurdles which are been there with regard to the development of the rural society. And these programs uh, since independence are working hard to eradicate the rural poverty. So, that way if we try to see, uh, we have to speak about the issue that the incidence of poverty in India is a matter of key concern for the poly policy analyst and the academic researchers because of its scope and its intensity. The first step in analyzing the problem of poverty is to be able to define it conceptually. I think that of course, is the first task and the minimum standard of living is one criteria which is used to define the poverty line. So, this minimum standard includes both the food and the non-food component. So, I think uh, we have to see that. Uh, the food and the non-food component are going to be part and parcel of uh, the understanding of the minimum standards. And according to the World Bank, uh, poverty is pronounced as the deprivation in well-being and comprises many dimensions. It includes the low income and the inability to acquire the basic goods and services necessary for the survival with dignity. I think uh, if you try to see the broader understanding. Uh, it speaks about the issue of uh, dignity, the issue of survival. It also speaks about the well-being of an individual and also it tries to speak about the economic concern. 
So, that way I think uh, this definition of World Bank gives a, a holistic understanding about what we mean by poverty. However, the issue of poverty line is basically seen as a conventional approach to measuring the poverty and it is to specify a minimum expenditure or income uh, which is required to purchase a basket of goods and services necessary to satisfy the basic needs of the minimum expenditure uh, with regard to the human needs. And that way we try to see that uh, people if we are able to do that basically we try to see them in terms of the issue of poverty line. So, poverty basically refers to a situation when the people are deprived of the basic necessity of life. It is often characterized as the inadequacy of the food, the shelter and the clothes which are the minimum requirements. In other words, poverty refers to the state of uh, what you can say uh, condition uh, where there is a lack of essential needs for the subsistence. It can be further subdivided into uh, two categories. One of course, is the absolute poverty and another is the relative poverty. Uh, absolute poverty basically it includes the lack of biological necessities such as the food, wa water, clothing, housing, sanitation. Whereas, the relative poverty that is the extreme poverty it refers to the issue of poverty line and is a definition of the amount of income a person needs to satisfy the basic needs. So, in basic terms absolute poverty is having the lack of basic resources and the relative poverty is more to do with the income inequality. So, that way I think uh, absolute and the relative are to be seen in a different context absolute poverty refers to a set of condition which is the same in every country and does not change over a period of time. The relative poverty on the other hand refers to the conditions which are subjective which are subjected to the society in which the person lives and therefore, it does vary from country to country and can change over time. Uh, for example, the urban cities will have the greater education, energy and the transportation costs. So, the poverty level line will be higher in this country uh, as compared to the poor countries. So, basically we can say that the relative poverty is, is fluctuating it depends upon the context and in that context only we can see whether we can specific uh, specify the things in terms of poverty or not. The planning commission expert group uh, which was constituted in 1962 uh, this working group constituted by the planning commission of India and they formulated the separate poverty line for the rural and the urban areas that is for the rural areas they have called it as rupees 20 and for the urban areas they have called it as rupees 25 per capita per year respectively. So, we can see that uh, the things are been measured in terms of uh, the per capita uh, per year capacity of a person uh, in terms of a specific uh, do, uh, denomination of rupees and in that way we try to see that the issue of poverty is been addressed by the planning commission expert group in 1962. Similarly, the V M Dandinkar and N Rath in 1971 has made a first systematic assessment of the poverty in India based on the national sample survey that is NSS data. Unlike the previous scholars who have considered subsistence living or the basic minimum needs criteria as the measure of poverty, V M Dandekar and N Rath were of the view that poverty line must be de deprived or uh, must be derived from the expenditure that was adequate to provide 2250 calorie per day in both rural and the urban areas. The ALAC committee who was again an economist in 1979 has uh, been part of the task force constituted by planning commission under the chairmanship of Y K ALAG himself. He constructed a poverty line for the rural and the urban areas on the basis of the nutritional requirement and the related consumption expenditure. So, basically we try to see that the expert group constituted by the planning commission and it was chaired by Suresh Tendulkar was constituted to review the methodology for the assessment of the poverty estimation and to address the following the shortcomings of the previous methods. And we basically try to see that uh, the previous committees which have given their recommendation uh, one finds that there is a lack of absolute consumption pattern 
that is the consumption pattern were linked to the 1973-74 poverty line baskets of the goods and services, whereas there were significant changes in the consumption pattern of the poor since that time, which were not reflected in the poverty estimates. So, that is one drawback which has been pointed out by uh, Tendulkar committee and also there was the inflation adjustment uh, which was been seen as the issue of adjustment of prices for inflation, uh, inflation both spatially and temporarily that is across time region and across the time. And the third dimension uh, which has been, been critical was the health and the education expenditure. So, the earlier poverty line assumed that health and education would be provided by the state and formulated the poverty line accordingly. Later on, uh, Rangrajan committee uh, which was set up in the backdrop of the national outrage over the planning commissions had suggested the poverty line of rupees 22 a day for the rural areas. And we try to see that uh, there are different dimensions which has been identified by uh, for the issue of poverty by Henry Burstein in 1992. He says that uh, the first thing which is required is the lack of livelihood strategies that is one dimension of poverty. Then the inaccessibility of to the resources basically the money, the land, the credit that is second dimension. The third is the feeling of insecurity and frustration. Uh, I think uh, that involves the psychological component and finally, the inability to maintain and develop the social relations with others as a consequences of the lack of resources. So, I think uh, these are the four dimensions which has been uh, uh, discussed by Burstein with regard to the understanding of the issue of poverty. Now, let us try to see that after understanding the issue of poverty uh, in terms of conceptual framework or in terms of how the various committees have tried to give a meaning to the issue of poverty, let us try to see what are the approaches to the poverty reduction uh, which has been encompassed in India. So, we basically find out that uh, the first approach which we can just label is the multi pronged approach in India. The multi pronged approach uh, which is seen as multi dimensional phenomenon uh, with a bundle of economic, social, geographical, human, gender and other deprivations. And these diverse features of poverty have led to the different strategies of the poverty reduction. So, intervention to reduce the poverty needs to take place at three different levels in an integrated manner. At the macro level, there are interventions aimed at the income poverty redu reduction uh, through the capital formation in the human and the physical resources and achieving the economic growth uh, through the fiscal incentives and expenditures. And at the community level or the village level, the government intervention aim at directly providing the basic social services that are the foundation of human capital formation and the local infrastructure development. The third type of intervention target is good health, nutrition and the education at the individual level. So, this is basically seen as the multi prolonged approach uh, in order to reduce the poverty. The second uh, approach can be labeled as the decentralization of the service delivery. Uh, both the design of poverty reduction strategies and their implementations are critical for to the success of the poverty reduction efforts. A multi pronged effort is necessary to meet the challenges of multi dimensional poverty at the implementation level. However, we try to see that vast experiences of year has pointed to the need for decentralization of the developmental efforts to enhance the implementation effectively. In a large number and diverse countries such as India, the local understanding of the processes of development is critical in effective imp implementation of the poverty reduction program. It is a critical, it is critical that democratic institution of local governance be strengthened and empowered to enable them to play an effective role in the delivery of services needed for the poverty reduction. Uh, the third approach uh, which we can see with regard to the poverty elevation is the active involvement of the community based organization that is the CBOs and the beneficiaries. So, uh, this is the uh, program or this is the strategy uh, which is seen as an active involvement of the beneficiary group. This ensures their empowerment and access to the benefits of program. 
the self help group have revolutionized the manner in which the formal credit can be made available to the poor and the individuals who cannot access the credit from the formal institutions such as banks and by making the process of saving and borrowing more transparent than be ever before so the self help groups point to the possibility of mobilizing the social capital to harness the collective strength of the poor and for the development in the process providing an important safety net for them uh, another issue which we can just highlight with regard to uh, the strategy for poverty alleviation can be the issue of public private partnership the public private partnership uh, which is basically seen as involving the benefits along with the local community uh, it is evident that the public delivery of the services suffers from the severe limitations both in terms of financial resources and efficiency it is important to recognize the benefits of public private partnership that is the ppp the fiscal capacity of the government at the central and the sub national level to enable more intensive efforts in the poverty reduction program has improved the significantly in the recent years the liberalization of economic policies has expanded the role of private sector in the delivery of variety of services including those in the physical infrastructure health education and finance so in this process the ppp has demonstrated the effic efficacy and efficiency in terms of the benefits uh, which are been shared between the public and the private uh, sectors so basically these are different strategies which we can think about are uh, can be seen as an important component with regard to the elevation of poverty now let us try to see uh, specifically with regard to what we mean by the rural poverty so we have discussed about the issue of poverty in general how it has been conceptually uh, taken up we have also discussed about the various strategies which are meant for the poverty alleviation and now we try to specifically think about or understand uh, what we mean by the rural poverty so in order to ascertain the determinant of the rural poverty it is imperative to explain how poverty is measured in estimating the poverty level defining a poverty line is the first step a poverty line demarcates the poor from the non poor and that of course is the 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 line of grading which makes the distinction between the two categories it is identified as the minimum required consumption level of food clothing shelter transport and healthcare which are to be provided to the group and which the others are deprived so the three distinct measures of poverty has been used by the study most of the studies following the popular foster greek thorback uh, approach uh, which is based on the poverty measures for a given population uh, first the head count index defined as the percentage of the population who live in the household with a per capita consumption below the poverty line that is the first aspect the second is the poverty gap index defined by the mean distance between the poverty line expressed as a proportion of that line this measures this measure reflect not only the incidence of poverty but also its depth and magnitude the third is the squared poverty gap index which is defined as the mean of the squared proportionate poverty gaps so unlike the other two measures it reflects the severity of poverty and it is sensitive to inequality amongst the poor so that way i think uh, these are the three ways in which we can understand the issue of uh, rural poverty and i think uh, it has certain amount of statistics which is involved and uh, it involves certain amount of technical understanding but uh, we have to know uh, that how it is been measured so we have to just see what are the different ways in which it is measured i think we are not going to uh, uh, discuss the complexity which are involved how it is to be measured so that is not our concern our concern is knowing about uh, the various ways in which the things can be measured uh, so in india basically we try to see a task force constituted by planning commission in 1977 has defined the poverty line for the country as per the per capita consumption expenditure and we try to see which we have shared earlier also that the average per capita daily calorie requirement of 2400 kilo calorie in the rural areas and 2100 
kilo calorie in the urban areas along with the minimum level of non food expenditure was seen as a criteria for identification of the poverty line. So, we try to see that uh, the 28th round of the NSS data the task force has estimated that on an average the, consum the consumer expenditure of rupees 49.09 per capita per month uh, has been seen as a standard and in 1973-74 uh, to meet the calorie requirement of 2400 kilo calorie per capita per day in the rural area was considered to be the landmark. So, this monetary equivalent was set up as the rural poverty line and those with the per capita expenditure below this level were defined as the poor. So, the rural poverty line defined at the national level was used in all the Indian states and on the basis of that we try to measure the rural poverty. So, poverty if you try to see is multidimensional phenomenon and thus needs to be tackled by providing the opportunities, creating the entitlement and building the capacity uh, which has been talked about by the famous economist uh, that is Professor Amrita Sen on the issue of in his work on poverty and famine an essay on entitlement and deprivation. So, undoubtedly the process of economic growth contributes to this end by creating a productive employment opportunity. However, it is argued that the growth process often bypasses many livings in the rural India and for those uh, who are left on the margin of the growth process the poverty elevation requires the direct state intervention. An analytical framework for understanding the rural poverty in India can be thought of in terms of the indirect and the direct approach uh, which can be meant for uh, the treatment of the poverty in the rural India. Like if you try to speak about the first issue that is the indirect growth approach. The indirect growth approach indirect approach uh, to the poverty elevation can be best understood in terms of the dualistic development model. In essence a dual economy model explain how the interaction between the agricultural and the non agricultural sectors of an economy impact upon the growth process. So, it has to be seen with regard to the relationship between the agricultural and the non agricultural sectors. The W A Lewis model suggests that the capital accumulation in the non agricultural that is the industrial sector as the engine of the growth in the developing economies. So, it basically try to focus upon the progressive transformation of the agricultural sector into the industrial sector with the supply of labor and the food from the agricultural sectors being the two fundamental resource resources which are to be flown at the heart of the structural transformation. So, I think uh, the WA model basically try to speak about the sort of uh, <coughs> industrialization as the ultimate with regard to the elevation of poverty and drawing on the emphasis on the industrial sector in the Lewis model. Uh, that and Revelian uh, basically in their work when is the growth pro poor. They have basically spoken about a model showing that the poor benefits from the non agricultural economic growth uh, through its ability to absorb labor from the poor rural agricultural economy. So, virtually we try to see that uh, the model concludes that while the non agricultural growth is important for the poverty elevation. The, elastic, the elasticity of poverty with respect to the non agricultural growth depends upon certain structural conditions such as the initial literacy and the market distortion such as the initial urban rural income disparity. So, that becomes an important issue and through that we can speak about the indirect target approach for addressing the issue of the rural poverty. The second one is the direct targeted approach. The direct approach to the poverty reduction emphasize that it is essential to directly provide the poor with the adequate purchasing power, other assets or the access to the food grains at subsidized price to meet their minimum consumption requirement. I think uh, this is where we try to see that the direct approach is dealing with the immediate benefit to the beneficiaries. In India the government has sought to create the entitlement for the poor through the wage employment programs, self uh, employment programs. So, these are the ways in which uh, the issue of poverty has been addressed, the provision for the free cost housing 
the provision of the food grains at the affordable prices are certain initiatives uh, which can be seen as part of the direct approach. Such anti-poverty programs have been the operational has been seen operational in the rural India on a significant scale since the 1980s. However, they have been redesigned over time with an increase in coverage and its effectiveness. And otherwise, if you try to see, I think we have variety or diversified uh, what you can say wage employment schemes which are been uh, seen in the rural India, especially the restructuring into the single schemes called as the Sampoon Gramin uh, Rozgar Yojana, which is called as SGRY, which has came in 2002-2003. Its primary objective was to provide the supplementary wage employment to the rural poor in the lean agricultural seasons and in the time of drought. The self-employment programs, which is called as the Integrated Rural Development Program, that is the IRDP was the integrated program of training the rural youths and development of women from the uh, specific scheme uh, through the form of uh, SGSY that is Swarnjanti Gram Swarojgar Yojana that came in 1999-2000. So, its basic objective is to provide the income generating assets to the rural poor enabling them to enhance their income as a sustainable on the sustainable basis. The provision of the free of cost housing to the poor under the Indra Avas Yojana that is IAY was initiated in 1996 is seen as another important anti-poverty programs which has been launched in India. In addition, there are other targeted schemes especially designed for the empowerment of the women and uh, socially disadvantaged groups. The targeted uh, public distribution system that is the PDS provides a food grain to the poor at the affordable prices. Under the, the system, the household below the poverty lines are issued the ration card uh, to ensure their entitlement in terms of the uh, requirement of the basic needs. So, I think uh, we try to see that uh, these are certain initiatives which have been seen with regard to the rural India. Now, let us try to see some other socio-political determinants uh, which can be seen as an important issue like there is an increasing acceptance of the view that the socio-political institutions influence the poverty elevation. Moreover, these institutions could reinforce the transmission of the economic growth uh, to the poverty reduction. Especially, we can talk about the issue of gender equality. It is argued that the reduction of gender disparity in access to the resources and opportunities to an increase uh, lead to the increase in the rate of economic growth. Uh, which in turn is leading to the poverty reduction. This is because the greater gender equality enables the women to take up the income earning opportunities and participate in the growth process. Similarly, we can see the empowerment of people uh, through the democratic decentralization and the good governance can be seen as an important issue. The economic growth when accompanied by the good governance leads to the socially inclusive development uh, which is poverty reducing. It can be argued that the democratic decentralization involving the devolution of the political and the economic power to the grassroots level institution is poverty reducing strategy. So, the need of the poor are addressed with a greater precision by involving the common men in making the decisions about the issues that directly concerns to the community. So, this is also seen as an important approach uh, which we can see. Now, I think uh, these are certain uh, measures which have been taken up by government of India uh, which has been done in the various states in India in order to ad address the issue of poverty. But beyond that, I think the important thing is that uh, we have to actually understand that uh, what uh, are the uh, different aspects of the development especially in terms of the rural development which becomes an important issue when we try to see that how rural poverty has been uh, uh, tackled. So, basically uh, now the task is uh, first to understand that what do we mean by the rural development. So, the understanding of the rural development is an important issue. Uh, it basically emphasizes on uh, how uh, we can see that developing countries are to be seen uh, in terms of the progression. The majority of the population which are living in the rural areas and 
we try to see that the backwardness uh, which is to be seen with regard to the retarding growth in another sector and in the economy as a whole is seen as an important parameters to understand the issue of uh, the poverty and in order to overcome that uh, we have the issue of rural development. So, the stress on the rural development is also due for due to many constraints faced by the rural areas which is generally suffers from the inadequate infrastructure facilities as compared to the urban areas and also in terms of technological advancement uh, which are uh, lesser as compared to the urban areas. So, the rural areas are not well placed in terms of even the minimum needs of the safe drinking water, primary health and the road transport. The apart from the rural population also suffers from the issue of the ignorance and the illiteracy which is quite evident. So, their traditional outlook towards the development has been seen as preventing them from getting the advantages out of the various developmental initiatives by the government. But we also try to see that uh, there is a need for certain amount of exposure to the media uh, which is to be seen in terms of both the electronics and the print through that so that they can be aware about what are the different uh, rural development initiatives. So, we have to see that how the rural development has to be seen in terms of an important understanding especially how the rural po populations are to be targeted so that they can be benefited uh, which are meant for them. So, we basically try to see that the rural development is going to be an important concern basically when we try to speak about the rural India. Now, let us try to see that how we can uh, speak about the nature and the scope of the rural development. So, we try to say that the rural development has emerged as a strategy designed to improve uh, the economic and the social life of the specific group of people uh, that is the rural poor. It involves extending the benefits of development of the rural population who seek a livelihood in the rural areas. So, the rural development denotes overall development of the rural areas with a view to improving the quality of life of the rural poor. The concept of the concept is seen as comprehensive and multidimensional in nature. It encompasses the development of agriculture and the allied activities, cottage and the small scale industries, the traditional crafts, the socio-economic infrastructure, the rural manpower and the improvement in the community services and facilities. All these things are part of the rural development in terms of the overall development of the area. So, the rural development covers besides the agricultural development a comprehensive set of activities pertaining to all aspects of the rural economy. It confers the benefit on a number of classes like the cultivators, the landless labor and the rural artisans. All these categories are being addressed by uh, the purview of the rural development. We also try to see that agriculture in its broader sense itself is very vast. It covers the activities like horticulture, irrigation, land development, soil and water conservation, animal husbandry, drying, uh, drying <coughs> up uh, poultry, pig farming, fisheries, handloom and the other village industries. All these things are part and parcel of the agriculture and apart from that we have also the issue of social forestry and setting up the agro based in industries uh, which are also seen as part of the forest based industries at a wider level. So, virtually we try to see that agriculture itself is very vast and we have to see that how the rural development can address the different aspect of the agriculture. So, the rural development uh, which is seen more than the agriculture development ought to take into account the existing local and the area wise resources and the complementary links among them. Because uh, when we try to speak about the rural development, it has to go beyond the agriculture practices and they also try to include the non-agricultural segments. There are various classes uh, in the rural India and sometimes the relations among them may be seen as conflicting also, especially when we try to speak about the rural India, we try, try to find out the issue of uh, the caste which is very prominent. There are caste conflicts which are uh, there uh, between the upper caste and the lower caste. So, these issues make the things more complex. So, we basically try to see that the rural development requires a wide infrastructure. The provision of this is not very easy task because it has to be understood by the government 
from the grassroots level. So, we try to see that the private investment in the area also is seen as very meager and the private partnership is also very lesser in terms of development. So, we have to see that uh, government has to take up the initiative seriously in order to work for the progression of the rural society. The potential of self-reliance in the rural areas need to be exploited in a planned manner. I think that of course is the thumb rule uh, which we have to follow. A single approach to the rural development would be not be effect, uh, effective if we try to see from one dimension. So, in fact, the rural development is the product of interaction between the various physical, technological, economic, socio-cultural, institutional and the environmental factors. Indeed, the rural sector should experience the required changes so that it can join the mainstream of the national development and can contribute its share for the economic development of the nation in general. Now, let us try to see what are the various objectives of the rural development because we have understood that what we mean by rural development in terms of uh, the trans transformation of the way of life. We have also tried to see the nature and the scope of the rural development and now let us try to see that what we mean by the objectives of the rural development. So, basically we try to see that in India uh, we have the various objectives of the rural development. First important thing uh, which we can just see is changing the attitude of the rural people towards the development in terms of transformation of the village community. So, changing the attitude is considered to be one important issue that we have to take into cognizance with regard to the rural development. Secondly, the promotion of democratic leadership at the grassroots level by setting up the local self government that is going to be an important issue and especially I think uh, the 73rd amendment as well as the Panchayatira institution itself is working for uh, creating the democratic leadership at the grassroots level. The third issue uh, which we have to see uh, tackle up seriously is the provision of the basic needs that is such as the drinking water, health care, better sanitation, housing and the employment which are part and parcel of everybody's life and we have to address these basic needs. The fourth issue uh, is the development of both the farming and the non-farming activities. Uh, so, as to generate the gainful employment without adversely affecting the environment. So, I think that is another important uh, uh, objective of the rural development. Beside this, the improvement of the infrastructure facilities in the vill villages, particularly the transport and the communication facilities are also going to be an important issue uh, which are to be seen with regard to the rural development. And finally, one can say ensuring a tension free life for the rural population by promoting the communal harmony and the level of literacy, education and the cultural activities in the rural area has to be seen uh, at, as the holistic uh, viewpoint with regard to the rural development. So, we try to see that these are the various aspects, the objectives which the rural development has to uh, take into consideration and uh, with that we can also specifically uh, think about that uh, the major objectives of the rural development then should include the full employment of the labor and the physical resources in order to achieve those objectives. It also has to have the setting up of the agro industrial complexes uh, which is again going to be an important issue. Then also uh, laying down the minimum standard of productivity of efficiency for those owning or using the precious resources that has to be seen as an important issue and also the minimum standard of performance by the public agencies. And beyond that, I think uh, creating the scientific temper which implies a change on the minds and the traditional habits of thoughts and action is going to be the ultimate uh, which is to be seen in terms of the overall development of the population and that becomes an important issue. Now, let us try to see that how according to the ASCAP that is the Economic and the Social Commission for Asia and Pacific has tried to see the criteria for the rural development. So, to that agency we try to see that uh, the rural development basically involves drawing the entire rural labor force into the mainstream for the economic activity. That of course, is going to be an important issue. 
then realizing the creative energies of the rural people that is also going to be an important issue and then enhancing the participation of the women and the youth in the rural development processes is going to be an important issue. Improving the quality of life through the integration between the development that is another important aspect and finally the all round development of the rural population by tapping the abundant manpower is going to be the ultimate which the rural development has to address. So, we basically try to see that the rural development involves generating the employment opportunities for the rural people active uh, uh, in terms of uh, the production so that they are able to meet their needs and ultimately become the major agents of economic progress and social change. And a climate has to be created uh, which has to be created which enables the rural poor to uh, realize their full potentialities to attain the higher quality of life with the economic security and to sustain themselves by their own. And this is going to be seen as an important issue uh, which has to be addressed by uh, the initiatives of the rural development. Now, let us try to see that uh, we can have uh, uh, the different uh, strategies, uh, strategies for the rural development and basically we try to see that uh, the rural development in India uh, through history or even after independence has seen the four broader strategies for the development uh, of the rural areas. The first one is the growth oriented strategy. The growth oriented strategy uh, which is based on the philosophy that the rural people like any other people are the rational decision maker who when given the adequate opportunity can have a proper environment which will try to maximize their income. So, the role of the, st the state in this strategy is to build the infrastructure and to maintain a favorable climate so that the benefit of increased production will gradually trickle down to the poor. The regulation and coordination of the activities of the private and the public agencies is primarily through the market mechanism. This paradigm form the basis of predominant agricultural development strategies of 1960s when the program like uh, intensive agricultural development uh, district program that is IADP, the intensive cattle development program that is ICDP and the high yielding varieties program that is HYVP has been initiated and we try to see that this paradigm failed to make any dent on the basic problems of poverty uh, in terms of unemployment and inequality and gradually it has to be abandoned. So, that was the first strategy which has been adopted uh, with regard to the uh, rural development. Another of course, is uh, the welfare oriented strategy. The welfare oriented strategy is to promote the well being of the rural population in general and of the rural poor in particular through the large scale social programs like the minimum need programs, the applied nutrition program, the midday meal program and many others. The primary means is used in this strategy are the free provision or distribution of the goods and the services and the civil amenities in the rural areas. And the critical assumption about this strategy is that people are not competent to identify and resolve their problem and that the government specialist can identify their needs and meet them with the financial and the administrative resources available to the government. So, we try to see that there is a disjunct which is there uh, with regard to the need of the people and how the government is going to uh, uh, understand those problems. So, that sometimes is leading to certain amount of mismatch and we try to see that the wel welfare oriented programs presents a mixed picture uh, in terms of that the rural po uh, poor has benefited significantly through some programs, uh, but not in uh, cer cer certain other programs. So, there are two major criticism or criticism of this strategy. Uh, one of course, is that it has created dependency on the government because they have to rely on them and second is that it requires resources that are beyond, beyond the means of the government. So, I think uh, these are two broader uh, criticisms which has been raised with regard to uh, this uh, approach. The third is basically seen as the responsive strategy. Uh, this is aimed at helping the rural poor people that is help themselves through their own organization and others support system. So, its concern is with responding to the felt need of the rural people 
and we basically try to see that the role of the government is to facilitate the self-help efforts of the village villagers by providing the technologies and resources that are not locally available. So, the critical assumption of this strategy is that the poor will identify and resolve their problems if provided with the minimal support and otherwise left to their own device and the initiatives. So, the community participation and the control in terms of project in activities is the primary <coughs> is seen as an important strategy especially we have the issue of India's operation flood program which was launched in 1970 uh, which includes uh, uh, as a good example uh, with regard to this strategy operation flood which was aimed at modernizing and developing India's dairy industry through the three tier system of the Anand pattern uh, dairy cooperatives and many voluntary agencies have also been part of this. So, I think somewhere we try to see that uh, this can be seen as another strategy uh, which is basically meant for uh, the development in terms of a specific strategy. And finally, we can speak about the last strategy that is the integrated or the holistic strategy. The integrated or the holistic strategy, uh, it basically combines all the positive features of the previous strategies uh, which we have discussed and it is designed to simultaneously achieve the goal of the growth, welfare, equity and the community participation. So, this paradigm takes a comprehensive uh, picture, but the integrated view of the basic problems of poverty, unemployment and inequality and it seeks to address the physical, economic, technological, social motivational, organizational and the political basis of these problems. So, we basically try to see that the multiple goals of these strategies are sought to be achieved by building the capacity of the community to involve themselves in the development in partnership with the government. The critical assumption about underlying this approach is that the government can restructure the social power relationships and centralized bureaucracies can learn to share the power with the community groups. So, the successful implementation of this strategy requires a complex decentralization uh, which is basically seen as uh, uh, trying to bring about a change which is having certain amount of permanent mechanism for the vertical and the lateral integration. So, we have to have the horizontal as well as the vertical integration, a combination of the specialist and the generalist skills that are to be uh, intermixed the institutional leaderships are to be developed, we have to have the social interventions in terms of capability and also we try to see that there are to have certain system management skills uh, which are to be done at the various level. So, the anti-poverty programs launched in the India in 1970s, particularly the integrated rural development programs, the national rural employment programs and also the training of the rural youth for the self-employment our intended to follow uh, this paradigm of development. But definitely we try to see that uh, uh, different uh, strategies which are been adopted by government of India and <coughs> by the various state initiatives are seen as having uh, certain success and sometimes uh, certain issues which were not been uh, reflected upon in terms of uh, the final outcome. And it also has a state appeal because in certain states they were considered to be quite successful, but in other places of the state or in other states sometimes they were not that successful. So, basically we try to see that uh, these are certain initiatives which are been taken up by the <coughs> so called uh, uh, governmental initiatives with regard to the rural development. Uh, focusedly if you try to speak about I think uh, uh, we cannot speak about uh, the rural development uh, if we are not in a position to really uh, see the trajectory of the rural development strategies which are been adopted in India. So, in that regard I think the first program or the first uh, program which we have to mention in detail is the community development program. Now, the community development program was the India's first plan, a uh, first year plan that came in 1951 and it was rightly thought that planning would be effective without substantial, with, uh, cannot, would not be effective without substantial participation of the people and thus suggesting the planning uh, we sought to have the people's movement uh, becomes an important issue. And basically we try to see that uh, uh, the national community development program 
which was launched in 1952 its aim being to bring about the overall development of the rural community with people's participation in the developmental process the government on its part decided to provide the technical and the other service services in a coordinated fashion an institutional structure was provided in the form of panchayati raj cooperatives and the village schools and this approach was basically seen as the holistic one uh, then next uh, in terms of uh, another program which we can speak about is the intensive agricultural district program uh, as the agricultural yields were very low so the government thought of uh, to provide a new strategy to boost up the food grain outputs so whereas the cdp that is a community development program is based on the equity principle the intensive agricultural district program was launched in 1960 and its aim was concentrating the resources in agriculture better uh, <coughs> in a efficient way the essence of iedp strategy has been to attain the food grain efficiency or rather the food grain self sufficiency that was seen as an important issue in the shortest period possible and it was basically meant for having certain other issues like uh, maximum irrigation facilities and the minimum natural hazards that is was uh, seen as an important strategy uh, a package approach was adopted to step up the agricultural production which was also involved we try to see that uh, seven districts which were selected initially for the iedp programs were uh, in tamil nadu especially the thanjavur uh, district we have west godavari in andhra pradesh we have shahadabad in bihar we have raipur in madhya pradesh aligarh in uttar pradesh ludhiana in punjab and pali in rajasthan so these are the districts which have been identified with regard to the iedp program and the government of india declares that these seven uh, uh, districts are the iedp districts uh, which were adopted in 1960 and uh, i think uh, this is where we try to see that uh, uh, these districts had gone some boost with regard to the agriculture development uh, credit must be given to the efficiency of idp that it has achieved its major objective it has created the new dynamism in the farming community especially uh, popularized as the high high yielding variety programs uh, which has gradually uh, enhanced the technical inputs uh, with regard to the rural india and we basically try to see that idp strategy faced uh certain problems uh, depending upon the crucial inputs like the fertilizers cooperative credits and support services uh, which were not been directly part of uh, this program so that was another important thing then we have the growth center strategy uh, which has been seen as uh, an important strategy to bring about the changes in the rural areas especially uh, the concept of the growth pool was been in introduced and uh, uh, we have Uh, professor v k r v rao who had suggested the formation of clusters of the villages and implying them with certain uh, development processes uh, that was another important initiatives uh, which has been taken care uh, then also we have the concept of integration which was seen as an important uh, uh, strategy with regard to the program uh, we have uh, the the issue of integration which was been seen as uh, are uh, trying to bridge the gaps which is there between the different sectors the sectorial balance has to be achieved through the national and the state priorities and also the local relevance and the economic efficiencies also so basically we try to see that uh, uh, this was another important initiative uh, which has been taken care and that way if you try to see i think uh, these are certain issues uh, which we can see as part and parcel of the rural development the concept of integration was been seen as the integration of the low income segments with the rest of the rural communities by ensuring them the better participation in the production processes and to have the more equitable share in the benefits of development so we try to see that uh, these various programs and the strategies uh, which has been seen as part and parcel of the rural india were seen as an important initiatives uh, which they wanted to work for with regard to the development of the rural areas but importantly uh, there are certain specific programs which were meant for the specific regions uh, like uh, or sometimes we can say for the specific uh, target like the special programs related to the small farmer development agency similarly we have the marginal farmer and the agricultural laborer schemes 
we have the drought prone area develop uh, area development program we have the tribal area development program for the uh, weaker section and the scheduled tribes uh, which were introduced in 70s and that way we try to see uh, these programs were basically aim of tackling the problem of poverty and backwardness of a specific region or a specific community and to support them uh, through the various program so we basically try to see that uh, these initiatives which have been launched uh, <coughs> by the government and later on uh, the program was also popularly called as the minimum need programs later on in 1978-79 the integrated rural development has try, uh, try to launch at a wider level and later on we try to see that many new in initiatives are being seen of late now we try to speak about the MG Narega which is basically seen as one of the successful uh, uh, program in terms of the flagship of the government of India it is basically meant for overall change especially bringing about uh, the employment in the rural areas and pro by providing the rural masses with the job card that of course is going to be an important issue uh, whereby they are trying to be helping themselves doing the jobs in their own areas and generating the income so i think uh, these are certain initiatives uh, which are been taken up by the <coughs> government of india at the various level uh, we have to actually see that uh, the objective of the program uh, sometimes may not be seen in conflict with another i think that is going to be an important issue but more importantly it is to be seen that uh, the new economic policy uh, which is uh, which, which is encompassed with the liberalization privatization and globalization is going to be more effective and basically we have to see that uh, uh, this is going to be an important challenge uh, which the government of india has to see we are going to discuss about this particular issue uh, in a specific sense i think uh, many things have to be discussed but keeping in mind that constraint of uh, the deliberation uh, so we are trying to just uh, bind up we have to un understand these issues of rural poverty and rural development which are sensitive with regard to the development of the rural areas i think uh, for uh, the book specific i think a wonderful book by uh, ar desai on rural sociology in india uh, can be read which is seen as covering various uh, 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 rural development programs in terms of evaluation and also we can have the work by kartar singh uh, which is on the rural development principal policies and management that is by sage publication there is also a wonderful book which uh, one has to really see with regard to <coughs> the understanding of the various rural development strategies so friends i think uh, this is where we have to see and i think uh, we will continue our deliberation in terms of further enhancement and that way we try to see that uh, the understanding which has been generated uh, through the various uh, uh, initiatives either it's the uh, the issue of rural poverty we started with the issue of poverty at the initial phase we try to understand that how poverty can be seen with regard to the various strategies which are to be adopted then we gradually move down to the the issue of rural poverty and we try to identify that how the rural poverty has been uh, seen in terms of its magnitude or in terms of its uh, uh, what you can say uh, addressing the issue so virtually we try to see that the rural poverty cannot be uh, taken up seriously without the effective rural development programs and that way we try to see that the rural development programs has to be seen basically with regard to the understanding of uh, the specific issue and the rural development i think uh, as we can say that uh, it can involve many aspect it can have the aspect of uh, what one can say uh, the holistic development that of course is going to be there but beyond that i think uh, what is required or what has to be generated is that the self reliance model uh, whereby the community by themselves can come forward in order to address the issues uh, that becomes a sensitive issue especially when we try to speak about the concern that uh, the development uh, which are to be initiated by the government can bring certain amount of dependency uh, among the rural population but that has not to be taken up uh, very seriously because uh, if that is the issue so then the, the the sort of innovativeness which is to be generated by the rural masses uh, may be at the margin so what is required is that uh, they have to be uh, motivated they have to be self reliant they have to be uh, made uh, active participants uh, active participants and also they have to be the active decision maker that is going to be an important issue because what we sometimes find that the the programs are coming from the top and the grassroots realities are different so what is required is 
that uh, we have to understand the essence of the program or the, the nature of the program from the grassroots. So, let the uh, especially the Panchayati Raj program is basically meant for addressing this particular issue whereby the sort of planning, the requirement and the other issues are to be seen which have to come from the base and from there it has to come forward. So, virtually we have to see that how uh, the program has to be seen that the rural development has to address the issue of community by involving themselves with regard to their own development. And if that is the source, if that is the motive, then I think we can speak about the success of the program. So, I think friends, uh, this is what uh, we have to uh, see with regard to the, the broader issue. It speaks about the continuity and the changes also, the dynamics which is involved in the rural society and that can make the things more effective. So, with that, uh, uh, we let us stop it here and we will be having some deliberations on certain other issues in uh, the next lectures. Thank you for the uh, patience listening and uh, we will be interacting on these issues further. Thank you.